I'm pushing at the end of the games and it's the last workout and I want to win. <laughs> like, I'll bet you on it. Sit. I just imagine like Sam next to me and we're going head to head and whoever wins is just the finish woman on earth. I always want to want to give up. I think about that and I'm like, you, you wouldn't give up in competition. Why would you give up in training? Nobody ever expected me to make it to the games, I think. <clears throat> I mean, my first year at regionals, I got disqualified the first day. So, people never expected anything from me. And I always wanted to prove what I could do. And I finally did that in 2015. <clears throat> Found out a lot of weaknesses in 2014 and worked on them. I'm so hungry for it. So hungry. So we are going now um, to get an MRI on my shoulder to see if, if I can start training again or if I have to wait a little bit longer and hopefully not get surgery for a uh, pinched nerve. So we'll see how that goes. Before the games last year, I or at the games last year, I don't know when it happened, but I had like a, a fractured rib. It wasn't like broken completely, just like a little fracture in it. And I could always fin feel like a pinch in my shoulder. And uh, when I was training for regionals, I could always feel it like in the dip and everything. And I was like, oh, it's just tight muscle. Don't think about it. Just kept on training and pushed through it. Uh, then I competed at the games. Didn't feel it that much at the games. But the first session that I did after the games, I did a burpee and like something was just not right. I never felt so much pain. I was like, oh, I'm just still tired after the games. Didn't think about it more. Uh, I had a little knee injury last year, so I was just trying to come from that. So I was doing a lot of upper body instead of lower body just to help the knee recover. Uh, then I went to Australia and got like, I don't know if I got food poisoning or just sick and was throwing up a lot and I couldn't understand why like my shoulder was hurting so much. So I broke the rib that's underneath the collarbone. So always when I was like throwing up, like you, you lift your trap or something. And I was like, why does this hurt so bad? On my 30 hour flight home, oh, it was very, very bad. Like I couldn't even lift my bags or anything and nobody would even help me I don't know why I was asking people to help me and they just like looked at me. They're like, oh, you're fit. You can do it yourself. I have a broken rib. Help me, please. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. I don't know what it is. I will find out, please. And uh, yeah, it was a very, very long day. But I mean, I, I knew I was going home to see my family and everybody and I, and I needed that. And um, yeah, I went to the doctor's. We thought it was a herniated disc just because of the nerve pain. Again, I went to uh, to get MRI. We saw that it wasn't a, nerve, uh, a herniated disc, so we were trying to figure out what it was. So I went to another, it's called a computer scan, I think. And then we saw the rib and it was just broken in half from overtraining and not recovering enough. So it, it had been happening for six months in total or something. And it's amazing what CrossFit does to you is that you have a specific pain threshold and you just think that if you can't push through a pain, you're weak instead of listening to your body. And that's what I learned. I learned it the hard way. And um, 
yeah, so I had a, a broken rib and a pinched nerve. And everything was just locked up here for about a week. And then I just wasn't able to use my upper body for 12 weeks. So, and uh, yeah, we checked it out after eight weeks if the pinched nerve was still there. I mean, I haven't, hadn't tested my upper body and we wanted to be sure before I would start my training again that everything was going well. And um, if, if it would have been pinched still, it, I would have needed... Uh, I would have needed surgery, and then this season would be out. So it was it was a bit stressing, <laughs> but everything turned out well. I'm good now, just not 77 and a half kilos. So coming back strong. It's my second week now in full training. <sighs> I'm, I'm very beat up, <laughs> to be honest. I, I feel like after the Games 2015, to be honest, my body's just so sore and I'm so powerless. It's like squatting and everything, everything is like so heavy. But I'm gonna give it at least three weeks before I start whining about it. So I'm starting with a run, then I'm going to go home, eat breakfast, and then I'm coming back for some lifting, and um, yeah, then I have some muscle up, or some gymnastics in, these, in this afternoon, and then walk bike late tonight. One mile, then 400 meters, tw 1200 meters, 400 meters. 1,000 meters, 400, 800, 30 seconds of rest between. Yeah. Yeah. I know, this has been my life for the last 12 weeks. <laughs> it's like, when I'm lifting, I'm, I'm still scared. And I like, have a hard time committing. But you just take time, get your sit again. I'm patient, I have time. Or do I? <laughs> no, it's gonna be good. It's just going through the open, still in recovery. And like I've always wanted a heavy cluster in the open. I'm telling you it's coming this year, just because I don't want it this year. <laughs> but. I'm just gonna think about the open, making it to regionals, and then making it to the games, and then I can be in beast mode again. And that's really hard, not wanting to win everything. <laughs> Smart. I'm turning into a runner. I wish. Now it is breakfast time. Okay, so I've been cleaning the storage, and I, the car is pretty messy. <laughs> <laughs> Have this broom in the back seat, <laughs> so. You just have to squeeze in. I was so relieved that it was a broken rib because I had, 
on my way to Iceland, I have never been so just the thoughts that were going through my head was just like, oh no, you're never gonna do CrossFit again because you have a herniated disc and it's gonna take a year for it to like heal. And then it's always gonna come back when you're under a lot of pressure and, and, and you're that type that you're always so stressed so it's always gonna come back and, and you're always gonna feel it. How, how like, cause my goal is also to make it to the Olympics. I was like, how are you gonna make it to the Olympics when you, when you can't even move your neck and like I was just yeah I was like oh my career is over what am I gonna do now like that all happened in like one day all those thoughts and uh, when the doctor said that he thought it was a herniated disc too I was just like there's no hope anymore like just need to deal with it when I get the results and and make the best out of it there's nothing else I can do and uh, then I got the results that it was a broken rib and like I th think it was the best news that could have come because it takes 12 weeks to heal and that's the perfect timing for the Open and, and help me like make it to this season. I mean, it's going to be hard not be like having the background from the off season this year, but I'm just going to work my ass off and, and make it. That's how it's going to be. There's a reason why it happened. I think I always believe that everything happens for a reason. So I think this is just something that I needed. I needed to get injured to work on my biggest weakness, which is endurance. And it's going to help me later on. Maybe not this year, but definitely next year. You have to have a lot of uh, self-control because it's so easy to like go into the mode. Oh, the weather is so bad just gonna stay home tonight and relax and like it takes so much energy from you when the weather is bad because it's such a struggle I mean when the weather is super bad you can barely drive the roads because of the snow and you don't see the roads or anything so like you have to cancel a lot of things just like you can you can never make plans in winter time in Iceland because of the weather and I think that toughens you up because you, I mean, you just have to learn how to let go and also how to, if you want things to happen, how to make them work. So like, you can't let anything stop you. <laughs> so it is. Sarah Pancake. It is delicious. Just finished breakfast now, and then I'm going to uh, do my second session, which is lifting. And then I'll come back here, eat, eat a little bit, take a nap, wake up, eat lunch, and then go train again. And then a little break again, just like at the gym, 15 minute break or something, and then go bike. Yeah. So like, this is my job, working from eight to six, seven. <laughs> it's um, one banana, 30 grams of oats, uh, cinnamon, and one 30 grams of egg whites and one regular egg. And it's gluten free oats just to be specific. <laughs> and old fashioned oats, they have to be old fashioned. They're so much better. It's the details. So that's, that's the one thing that I've changed for this season is being more smart. I used to never sleep. Just, I've always had a hard time sleeping so Sleeping is like my priority now and and um, Yeah, I have to try to get at least eight hours of sleep every night and then try to nap for 
15 to 20 minutes every day. Nap or not nap, just like laying down something over my head and just, yeah, not thinking about CrossFit for 15 minutes, which is very hard. Because usually I'm just thinking about my next session. <laughs> Last week was my first week of real training again. And uh, so I had prepared for the worst <laughs> compared to last week. And it was just, it went way better than I expected. Running 6K in the morning. And then everything that I did last week, but with more reps today. And I got heavy, like everything was heavier also today. I just felt much better. So it was a great day of training. and. Still have a gymnastic session left, so that will be hopefully good too. But it takes time. It's just how it is. You need to be patient. You never know what's gonna happen. You should never take that for granted that you're gonna make it to the games. You never know what Dave's gonna bring at regionals. And like of course I'm gonna try to be as ready as I can, but you will, I mean, you never know what what could come up. And being in the European regionals is probably one of the hardest regions then. And, and also starting my season in February <laughs> compared to January or December, it's gonna be pretty difficult too. Do you think that's affecting you or do you think mentally you just think that it's affecting you? I think mostly it's mentally and as soon as I get my confidence back, it's gonna it's gonna be less. But I always I always want to be like I always want to assume that I'm not gonna make it, so I will work harder to try to make it. Because you never know what any like what events Dave's gonna bring and how the other girls are in it. And there's nothing I can do about it than to try to be better than. I am right now. Hopefully that will be enough. But you never know what's gonna happen.
Okay, this is a true talent. Can you, you can you peel an apple without it falling? Come on, Sarah. Always the last part. It's just the day today. It's always the last part that's terrible and everything. <laughs> Hard days, I eat around 3,000 calories. And um, easy days, two or easy regular days, 2,600. So like today would be around 2,600 to 2,800. If I'm starving in the evening, I'm not going to starve myself. It's just to have like a... A routine of the of the nutrition. Guys aren't as strict in nutrition as the girls. That's what I have noticed. Do you think that hurts them? Uh, is, there, is there something different biologically? I think it's mostly in girls' heads. Like, okay, nutrition can help you a lot, but if you make it affect you too much, like it affects me so much. If I eat bad, then I'm like, oh, I'm so heavy today. I'm like, I, I can feel my joints are stiffer than usual, like so much in the head just because I've read so much about how bad food can affect you. While the guys are like, F it. if I'm bad, I'm bad. Like they don't care. While the girls overthink everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could be like that. Like not thinking too much about everything. But then you also think, like, okay, in the future, I want to think, okay, I did everything that I could to be the best that I could. Like, I did the nutrition. Instead of thinking, like, oh, I never got where I could have been because I didn't want to focus on this or this. Like, I want to be, okay, my nutrition is 100%, my sleep is 100%, my recovery is 100%, my training is 100%. Like, you have to take all of those different things and try to be the better than you are now in them at the right time but I think also like I ate pizza for three weeks and that helps me now because I'm like oh I love eating healthy again and the feeling of eating healthy instead of being like oh I've been doing this for freaking two years I can't do this anymore so you gotta balance. yeah you gotta balance it out and like you just need to find the right time to balance it out is there a, a guy that you've noticed that's like the worst than all the others? Like in nutrition yeah. or, yeah, Fraser, he doesn't care. Thank God he has Sammy though now. Like, well, okay, Rich is also Chick-fil-A fan number one. It was crazy. Like, they, they don't eat at all. Like during training, they train for six to seven hours or something a day. And they eat maybe one bar or something and then one day he came he brought lunch with him I was like why he's bringing lunch and it's Chick-fil-a so he eats Chick-fil-a 20 minutes later he does like a 40 minute workout like heart rate high and everything I was like I could never do a workout after eating a burger like I would be like lying on my back and like I just need Netflix and chill <laughs> but it didn't affect him at all I mean, he's just so used to that. I think his first regionals also, he just got McDonald's or something. It's crazy. I wish I could be like, that's how I was in 2015. After, or like most evenings after training, I went to In-N-Out Burger and ate In-N-Out Burger every day. Oh, it's so good. It's my favorite. And after competing at the games, like, on Friday, I went to uh, Paiology Pizza, and then on Saturday, I went to, I think I went to In-N-Out Burger again. Like, yeah, it's the old Sarah, it's a good Sarah. That's where I trained so I could eat, and now I'm like eating so I can train good. <laughs> so that's the change of it.
Hard, harder than I thought. The legs were a bit heavy, but it was good, good sweat. What was the, what was the run? 5K every six minutes. No, 1K every six minutes, five times. <laughs> Total of 5K. <laughs> I wish I could run 5K in, <laughs> in five minutes. So our focus is to stay consistent instead of like going hard and need to rest. So I was trying to hold around 5.30 pace. I was trying to hold 5.20. It was, got a bit hard. I, I could do that last week. I felt so good last week. But today I'm a little bit more tired. My legs. I know sometimes you just go into the zone and you're just, you don't even think about anything. That's a little bit what happened. Just music on and, and yeah. I think it's because of my lifting later. I'm focused for that. You excited about that? I am, if it goes well. <laughs> no, I, I'm excited. It's just, I just need to not put any pressure on, like, not have a specific number in mind that I want to hit. Just go with a with feel. It's kind of my problem now. I'm always thinking about my old numbers and Comparing it to that instead of thinking about what's the most that I lifted after I started again Because I've had a hard time with like coming back from or starting again after an injury because I'm I always have the What I used what I used to be able to do and Then I get like half of that like if I'm doing ring muscle-ups or something like that 
So I just wrote down like my my dream goals, my uh, like realistic goals, and then here's each week. So like my my dream goal in the Open is top five in Europe and top ten in the world. That's my dream goal. Uh, the realistic goal is just make it to regionals, top 40. And um, and then I write here is every week until the Open is over. And then I would write the regional goals here. So now it's every week until the Open and during the Open. And what my goal is each week. <laughs> Much better than expected. And yeah, last week I couldn't snatch more than 70 kilos. Today I snatched 77 and a half. And I snatched 75 two times, <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that. And the cleans I haven't gone over 85 kilos in seven months. So today I went 92 and a half. So it was way better than expected. And I like there's enough left in the tank for me. It's just committing to the weights again. What was the goal? Today, uh, more than 70 and more than 85 kilos. <laughs> so I did that. Pretty happy with that. Now it's food time. So hungry. How cool is my dress sweater? <laughs> I was always like the, the tall girl and the strong girl. Like I was different from other girls and I was always really jealous. I wish I could be like them. I remember when I was in, um, what do you call it? Like the gym in school, P, no, yeah, P. Like I was, got always really red on my cheeks and all the guys were always making fun of me. So I just stopped going because I didn't want to be red in my face. Girls weren't supposed to be red in, at their face and weren't supposed to like work hard in, at gym. It was just the guy's time. That's how I felt. I mean, it wasn't like that. It was just stuck in my head. Like girls should always be pretty and and uh, skinny and shouldn't be that strong. So I think I was just embarrassed of who I was and trying to be something else. And that just took my self-esteem away. I always wanted to be an athlete, but I never believed that I could because I was a bigger girl. And yeah, finding something that I was finally good at or finding something that means something to me is, has, I think, helped me so much to be where I am now. It's like when I started training, I could do two push-ups and I was happy with that because it was on my toes. Now I'm like, F I can't even do 80 meter on broken handstand walk. It's like, it's, uh, yeah, you just fight different levels on where you want to go. And I, I don't think that, like, I don't think that I ever believed that I could be where I am right now. Like, if somebody would ask me, I would be like, oh, I'm going to be a chef or something like that. So I think it's, uh, it's helped me a lot to realize that if you work hard you can actually be good in something I always gave up on everything when I was younger so 
I always proved myself right by giving up, by how bad I was in everything. Instead of now, I'm like, just, I never give up. Either I, I don't get what I want, and I'm still trying to get it, or, or uh, yeah, the hard work pays off. I started training in a global gym in 2013, so there was no pull-up bar or muscle-up like rings or anything like that. So I had to like my dad helped me build this to to practice that. But we didn't have a pull-up bar, so my dad just hung them up the other day. But we had rings over there. It was a rule always when I walked inside and came back here to uh, to my room, I would always have to do five attempts to try to do a muscle-up. And I never got it. Where'd you get your first muscle up? When? Where? Where? Oh, I got it here, but it was like, yeah, it, it took seven months to practice, but it, it was like after one and a half hour. I was watching, I think it was a video of Josh Bridges doing muscle ups, and I just saw how, how well he like got through the rings. So I was like, oh yeah, he's just like, he's just like, if I if he's throwing a ball, he's like, how do you say it? Like knocking the head to the ball. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Like when Maybe you're in soccer. Head. Yeah. Like when you're in soccer and the ball is come here, you like use your head to catch the ball. Do you have like a word for it in English? Headed. Headed? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, you can think about like headed, heading a ball or something like that. And that's when I got it. I was like, yes, finally. But it was not beautiful. Definitely not beautiful. And then uh, we moved to, or I the gym that I was working at. So I was working in, at the desk at, at a global gym and they just bought like a new, uh, what was it, like uh, a dungeon room, which was like super low. So we hung up rings there. And I think I have an old video of me doing muscle ups there. Like I couldn't even extend the arms because it was so low. 
So like my knees were like this from the ground. That's in my memory. I don't remember quite well, but I was like so happy with doing like two muscle ups there. So bad. Couldn't do chest to bars because if you did chest to bars, you would hit your head. Like, oh, it's good times. Good times. Now I have it too nice. <sighs> body still remembers everything else like I don't do any CrossFit at all right now like I'm starting now last week I started doing CrossFit again but like since the games I haven't done any like watts or anything it's always just been like movement work endurance stuff I've been doing so much running technique and running like if I don't become a runner like gosh then I'll take a break from crossing and just do a triathlon for a year. <laughs> Get good at it. <sighs> there are so many new things that I've never done before. Yeah, but I think it's, uh, I won't see it yet, but I will see it when I'm trying to peek at the games. Then all of what I'm doing now is going to benefit me. Then it's maybe not benefiting me now because I don't need to be in top shape now. Although I want to be in top shape <laughs> every day. <laughs> but I think this is just one of the things that was missing from last year. And that's why I got beat up on a Sunday. <sighs> What's your top five favorite TV shows? Top five. <sighs> I have to say Friends, of course. Friends is just like, I put it on just when I'm home and I'm cleaning or something and I can listen to it and I know exactly what's going on. Family Guy, I love Family Guy. But the first three seasons are just like the best seasons. Uh, Arrested Development, yeah, it's, it's just so good. Wow, it's so hard to choose. I love Desperate Housewives too though, sorry. I don't know, I know. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Crazy anatomy. Like, I watched three episodes and I'm like, what? Is that? What is this? It's so dramatic. It's like, oh, she's drowning. No, she lives. It's like, oh, come on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And one more. Oh, it's so hard to choose. I have to say, Game of Thrones in second place, though. It is just the best. Like. So good. Huh. I think I'm done. Because they always end up in the washing machine. Because I put them in my pocket or something. And um, I've gone through a few phones. The worst thing that happened to me is when I was traveling with Fraser in, uh, in, uh, in Texas when we went to the Michael Johnson Center. The first day there, I went to pee and my phone was in my pocket here and I was flushing the toilet, like flushing it afterwards and my phone dropped into the water and I was like, oh shit. and I picked it and I was like, ew, 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 gross, gross, gross. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take the SIM card out before it gets destroyed. So I took the SIM card out because I was like, oh, I can buy a new phone, like if, if it doesn't work and took the SIM card out and it popped too much. So it went down the sink. I was like, my life is ruined right now. So, it was so bad. It, that's like a typical Sarah, like.
Yeah. On the right. That's after the final battle. Yeah. That's where yeah. I'm like, what just happened? So, even though, even though at that point, like, you know, you're not going to win. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything. Oh. I yeah. So I didn't check the leaderboard the whole day. So I had no idea if if I was in seventh, if I was in third, if I was in second. I had no idea. Did that help? Mm, yeah, because what you start doing when you know where the scoring is at the leaderboard is you start only thinking about the persons that are around you on the leaderboard and you forget everybody else. That's what happened to me at the games twenty fifteen, like I was only looking at Katrin the whole time, and when I saw that she passed me, I was like, oh, it's over. Instead of being like, okay, I can't let anybody come between us, because I had some, like, leading points on her that I didn't even think about. I was only thinking about her. But it, I think it's always... Do you want me to put it down? I'm just going to throw it yeah. down Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, I think I did it in Dubai for the first time, and it just suits me better not knowing anything. While Sam loves to check it, and it doesn't affect her at all, but it, it affects me. Like, if I see all of a sudden I'm in fourth place, then I start bringing myself down instead of thinking, like, maybe I'm still in second, I'm going to give it everything I got to get back to first. against the wall when I started across it and now I'm going over obstacles so improving slowly <sighs> yeah but I mean this is the hardest training for me that's gymnastics like lifting weights and grinding it's just it's like everybody can do that but this like if you fail you're like why am I failing like it gets so frustrating
Sometimes I, I'm high maintenance. If I have a bad day, I'm high maintenance. <laughs> then I need all the food and love in the world. And everybody has to feel sorry for me. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Maybe I am high maintenance and I don't see it. all the time. I'm always late. So my mom calls me Sarasena, which means like Sarah the late one. <laughs> so I've been trying to fix it for like, I don't know how long. And like all my friends always tag me in like these memes that are like, hey, I'm on my way. And then like, there's a guy in a bathtub relaxing. And that's me. <laughs> that, that is so me. I'm like, hey, I'm on my way. And then like two hours later, hey, what's up? <laughs> but Everybody just tells me the wrong times now, so I show up on time. If it's a serious thing, I'm on time, of course, except for my best friend's wedding. So it was, uh, <laughs> I was training, I don't remember what I was training for, but it was for some competition, so I had like a really long training day. And then I got home, got ready for the wedding, and I was like, Fuck, it's like, I hope she hasn't walked the floor yet. And I opened the door and she's about to walk the floor. I was like, closed it again. I was like, oh my gosh. And she opened it. She's like, go inside right now. And then I'm walking. I was like, okay. And then I walk in. Everybody's looking at me. I was like, no, it's just me, guys. It's just me. Yeah, hey. <laughs> After that, like, I should have learned from that, but I still haven't learned from it. That's the worst part. When will I stop being late? Oh. One day. Everybody knows the answer to this. Pizza. Yeah, definitely. What? What? Oh, all of the meats in the world. Cheese, mozzarella cheese, cream cheese. And I'm gonna say this, pineapple. People will be offended, but I love pineapple. Uh, yeah. And it has to be cheese in the crust also. And garlic, garlic oil on top. Mm. Why are we talking about this? <sighs> what do you think if, so if somebody is going to challenge you on the eating contest? Whitney Gillen? I owe her a eating challenge. Like, we were talking about it at the games this year. We were next to each other in, uh, in the locker rooms and she challenged me and I bailed out. I was too afraid. I think she might actually beat me in it. She's a beast. <laughs> She's. No, but I could I could eat longer than her. She would be quicker than me, but like I never get the feeling of being stuffed, you know. So you eating, I get eating endurance. Yeah, I got eating endurance. I think there's a ghost that follows me everywhere, and I've named him Marcus. Marcus? Yeah, I do not know why, but his name is Marcus. What happens that makes you think you have a ghost? I like some weird things have happened, like some things that I should not be like lucky about, that like, like almost going into a car accident and like it stops like five centimeters from a from a cliff or something like that. Like I've had so many occasions where I'm almost supposed to be dead, but I'm very lucky. So I think that somebody's following me. That's Marcus. I'm sure about it. You have to tell him, don't drive with Sarah apparently. For real though, <laughs> don't drive with me. <laughs> Sponsor that I've just signed with. Um, 
it's uh, Icelandic water. We're going to the photographer's studio. Yeah. Trying to finish everything now before the season starts. I mean, of course, I'm going to do some photo shoots during the seasons, but it's better to be done with all the big ones. Like now I'm going to a studio and that's going to be like two, three hours there. And then I'm going to do like the, the typical CrossFit photo shoot training while they're shooting us or shooting me. So like the big one is over and also like Nike, I usually do a photo shoot in January for them and then again right before the games. So I'm trying to trying to finish as much as I can now before the crazy training starts because it stresses you so much out when you have to do a long day of a photo shoot and then you have also like six to seven hours of training. that I don't have to do it myself because I suck at it <laughs> like you noticed maybe <laughs> I'm always like the first day I was good I was like oh I'm fancy and I was like no I can't <laughs> yeah I was like ah oh, doesn't matter anymore <laughs> they see me in my worst when I'm biking <laughs> I want more than three kids three kids is like a normal thing I want to have it like four to five kids. I hope it's just gonna be like triplets and then twins and then I'm done. <laughs> no. <laughs> Get it over with. But just now because I'm so competitive and of course I want to be the best and and also like I want to prove that anybody can work hard and win the games like it's not just the all athletic persons I mean like she has won the games she almost made it to the Olympics in running like she's always been a freaking amazing athlete Katrin has always been a great athlete like she was in uh, like running uh, I don't know what you call it, like when you're running and then like, like throwing something. Do you uh, know what? Uh, ja yeah, like the combination, like that, the, all those things. And like, oh, like a decathlete. Yeah, decathlete, yeah, like she was in that. Also a gymnast, like she's always been a great athlete. Annie also. And then I'm like, oh, I was a fat kid and <laughs> now I want to be an athlete and just working my way up there. And I want to <laughs> prove to everybody like, I mean, I enjoyed my childhood so much because I didn't give a damn about anything. Like, it's the best time in the world. I was just in school, went home, made a pizza, ate pizza for lunch, went back to school. Like, I didn't care about anything. And, uh, and I want to prove, like, you can do anything if you set your mind to it. You don't have to have the background. You don't have to have been a gymnast for 13 years although <laughs> it's very common that gymnasts win the CrossFit Games but
like. I mean, that's how it feels in competition. The more you practice it, the less painful it is. Or is it? <laughs> oh, it's just like I just try to imagine that I'm on a competition floor and like it's the last workout and like depends on what I do in that workout if I'm going to the games or not and then just like how bad do you want it? It's only pain. It's not like you're killing yourself. Like you feel more, you feel better after it the more you kill yourself during a workout. <laughs> But like, it's dangerous when you start feeling sorry for yourself in the middle of a workout. Like that's the danger zone. Then it's no, no turning back. So I haven't had toilet paper here for a long time. So my friend gave me like baby Pampers wipes. So that's just what's, what's been in the bathroom for the last like two weeks. So I remember toilet paper because you guys are coming. <laughs> my lifting is finally back. My snatches are always really good. Cleans, just need to build up a little strength in my legs again. <laughs> but that's gonna come. I mean, I have three weeks. So much time. <laughs> on the bike, are you going for a wattage? What, what's the goal this time? Yeah, so now I'm doing four rounds of four minutes at 160 watts and then four minutes at 200 watts. That's not that high, actually. So, so it's, uh, the bike sessions that I have been doing like for the past three, four weeks have been pretty brutal. So this is just heaven compared to that. And uh, when I was in Spain, I did a, a lifetime goal. I biked 100K, 104. My private parts have never hurt as bad in my entire life. And uh, yeah, but it was worth it in the end. <laughs> challenging for the mindset it's so easy to give up like I don't know how many times when I'm doing all the stuff like endurance stuff that I'm just like ah oh, why am I even doing this anymore like 
this isn't fun. And then you see how much you're benefit, benefiting from doing stuff that, like I never ever thought that a freaking 30K bike each day would help me in a CrossFit workout. And then I do the first open workout and I'm talking in my last round. Like, <laughs> it doesn't, like it's crazy how much you can benefit from that. So I think like, everything happens for a reason. My reason was my body needed a little bit break and I needed to work on my endurance, which I've been doing. So I think that's the biggest benefit from it. It's always like in the process of making it to regional Vegas to the games, it's so much up and down. It can be like doing so well for two days and then you're just shit for five days. Like, it's so many different things that can affect you. <sighs> 20K, check. I think I sweated a little bit. It's called Singer Twister. It's, it's like a, a tortilla with like KFC chicken in the middle and then like cheese and, and like you can have barbecue singer twister and they have like lettuce on it too. It's a little bit healthy. <laughs> so I would do like my own singer twister and add like the little uh, like chicken nuggets, popcorn chicken and Doritos to it also just to make it even better. That was the life. Like I'm just surprised I wasn't fatter. Like, yeah, I, did, I would eat pizza in the noon, work at KFC in the evening, take KFC with me home, bring it to school the next day. Like, it was just, that was the life. <laughs> it's probably because I slept more at that time. I was growing. <laughs> I swear, I'm, I'm thinking if I, yeah, I stopped working there at 17 and I was like, okay. Or I stopped working there when I was 16 and I was like, okay. No more KFC. Not anymore. I overate it. But the worst thing is that my brother and my dad also loved it, so I would bring them home, like food at 10 in the evening, and then just eat it again if I was hungry again. But like, I biked to work, so I just earned a freaking senior twister. Come on. <laughs>